اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هو الذي بعث في الاميين رسولا منهم يتلو عليهم اياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمه وان كانوا من قبل لفي ضلال مبين وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم انا دعوه ابي ابراهيم وبشاره اخي عيسى ورؤيا امي امنه كما قال عليه الصلاه والسلام صدق الله وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين my dear respected brothers and sisters in islam once again we are sitting here in this masjid in connection to a gathering regarding sidatun nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam even though we are talking about sira but regarding sira of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the bottom line is how to bring it to our life and make it practical in arabic there is a saying la taqul lil khairi wasifan wa kun bil khairi mawsufa do not appreciate good only adopt the good in your own life and practices and that is the order of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we are making this dua time and again in every prayer of ours اهدنا الصراط المستقيم little meaning is guide us to the straight path but technical one is keep us going on the straight path because when you are muslim and you are praying prayer so already you are guided still you are asking allah subhanahu wa taala to guide you so it means you want him to establish you and give you stability on that path because when allah subhanahu wa taala He turned out Iblis from the garden, from Jannah. So he said to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, "La qadam la lahum sirata kal mustaqim." Summa la atiyam lahum min bini adihim wa min khalfihim wa an aymanihim wa an shamailihim wa la tajidu aksarahum shakirin. You turned me out because of this Adam, so I will be sitting there on the straight path for his offspring to award them, to divert them, to deviate them, to cause them to go astray, and in this regard. my tareeqe waridat and my strategy will be that i will take them from their friends from the bay from right side from left side 
and then they will be eating yours drinking yours breathing yours living in your world but they will not be thankful to you so a satan is sitting here on the straight path ibn masud radiyallahu ta'ala an narrates a hadith قال خط لنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم خطا بعنزته رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم having a small spear not too long in his hand عنزة so he draw a line there on the ground and then on both side to right and left he drew different lines and then indicated towards and he said wa anna hadha sirati mustaqiman fattabi'u wa la tattabi'u as-subura fa tafarraqa bikum an sabili that this is the example and parable of a straight path so be strict to and don't go to all the streets to right and left do not take an exit otherwise you will go far away of the straight path of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our son said to him masud radi allah ta'ala an he narrated another hadith daraban lahu masalan siratan mustaqim Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put a parable of Sanat al-Mustaqim. That is a street or a path in between two walls going straight. And on both sides in the walls, both walls, there are abwaab al-mufattaha. Open doors, not closed doors. But, عليها سطور مرخات covered with curtains not with doors and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says wara kull bab hunaka daag yadru ar wara kull sitr daag yadru behind every curtain there is a caller who is calling you come here and come here every step And Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that overhead there is another caller. He is also calling us. Don't don't look at your left and right and go straight on the street path in between the two walls. Now Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that that path is sirat e mustaqim. The doors are towards evil, kufr, shirk, and medicines. The sutur and curtains are the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hududullah e mawanehu. One door is getting open towards theft. Another one towards zina. A third one towards robbery and dakaiti. A fourth one towards turmoil, not of evils. And behind every curtain, there is a Satan. He is calling upon you. They come here, enjoy this door. And overhead there is Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala who says, "No, don't look at them. Don't incline to." do not listen to have the straight path and be strict to now rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that that path will take you towards allah as in holy quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says inna rabbi ala sirat mustaqim different meaning given by mufassirin 
that my Lord is there on Sirat e Mustaqim. One meaning is his rules are established. His rules are very straightforward. That is Sirat e Mustaqim. But I explain it. There is a well-known freeway, for example. On the other hand, on the other side of the freeway, there is a well-known city. If somebody asks you, I want to go to such and such city, and you told him that that city is on freeway so and so, it means take that freeway. Do not take an exit to right or left. Right away that will take you to that city. So if you are looking for Allah, so in the Rabbi, Allah Sirati Mustaqim. You have to be strict too. So for sure you will approach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So keeping in view all these details given by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ehdina Sirat al-Mustaqim is must for us to make that dua again and again. Now what is that Sirat al-Mustaqim? So in the same surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Sirat al-Lazina an'amta alayhim, غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. That is the path of those who received your favor. You did your favor to them. Not those who are cursed in riot. And not those who went astray. That is one explanation. Another explanation in Surah Tafsir. I have written a book in Arabic language for ulama. And that is At-Tahbirat fi At-Tahbirat wa Rabti Suri wal Ayat. When it will be complete, inshallah, will be in five volumes or so. That what is the rabbit or connection or relation of such and such surah with the previous one and the following one? And what is the relation of this ayah with the previous ayah and the coming ayah? So now, right after Surah Al-Fatiha, where we have recited here, the Nasrat Al-Mustaqim, Asrat Al-Lazina, Amhanta Alayhim, Ghair Al-Mahbub Alayhim, Wal Al-Dhualim. After that, the Surah is Al-Baqarah. Now, even though, the tertib and sequence we have in our Holy Quran, neither the ayat revealed in the same sequence, nor it was there written in the same sequence. Whatever portion of a surah was coming to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was telling his sahaba that these ayah put it after ayah so and so of such and such surah. In the same way he was saying put this surah after that surah and before that surah. Because that is its tartib or sequence there in lawhi mahfuz. Bal huwa quranun majidun fi lawhi mahfuz. So Quran was compiled with different Sahaba, but not in this sequence. And as you know, Imam Bukhari, Rahimahullah, he has written a chapter, Babu Majafi Jam al Quran. Gathering together of Quran or compiling Holy Quran. In Ghazwa Ibulu Hanifa which is called the Ghazbatul Yamama as well. And that Ghazwa, that was done in the time of who? Sayyidina Abu Bakr, radiyallahu anhu. I have written a book already printed. Khulafai Rashidin, Hazrat Hassan or Hazrat Muadhiya, radiyallahu anhu. We reproduced it here as well. Printed back home. 
But the Urdu Arabic books where I printed are Pashto books where I printed there, so we reproduce it here. And we were bringing it, but unfortunately the same thing as I mentioned. But anyhow, that's available on Amazon here. Moral said last night, he, because some brother asked me, so then I told him that if you can make the announcement, so that's available there on Amazon. <coughs> Yamama, that's a well-known area in Arabia. A delegation came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there from In that delegation of four or five people, there was one guy whose name was Musaylama. They stayed outside Medina somewhere. The other guys, they showed up and came to visit Rasulullah in Masjid. But Musaylama did not come. He was staying there. Shaitan was sitting in his mind. That's why he didn't come. And later on, when they went back, he wrote a letter to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Min musalamat Rasulullah ila Muhammad Rasulullah. This letter is from Musalamat the Messenger of Allah to Muhammad the Messenger of Allah. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ قَسَّمَ الْأَرْضَ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ قُرَيْشٍ نِسْفَيْنِ Fanisful li wa nisful lak. That out of that, the globe or the earth is divided between me and Quraysh 50-50. For 50, you are the religious leader and the king and for 50% I am. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam received the letter. He ordered the katib. And he did imla or dictated his letter to Musalam. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Min Muhammad Rasulillah ila Musalam al-Kazza. This letter is from Muhammad the Messenger of Allah to Musalam the liar. And he was. Wabad. فَإِنَّ الْأَرْضَ لِلَّهِ يُرِسُهَا مَنْ يَشَاءَ وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ What a concise letter. What a comprehensive letter. Only you can say the whole letter was one ayah. That the earth or globe belongs to Allah. He gives it to whom he likes or wills. And the ultimate good end is for God fearing him. He ordered to write the letter and the Katib wrote it. He gave it to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa looked at it. And he said that the subject of letter is like this. Who will take it to the shaitan? al -Kazab. So, so many sahaba were sitting here. There was a Poor Sahabi, poor in a sense, having a basket, having dates there, roaming in the streets of Padena, selling dates, the more, the more, one kid came, one penny, you me. Another kid, two penny, you me. I think we call him Periwala. Yes. You know that or not? Once again, I have to make only one complaint about you people. <laughs> yes. You are nice people. I found you very nice. Yes. But you are short coming in that you are not speaking out. So again, when I ask, we call him Periwala. Yes, you can speak. <laughs> Yes, that is because of you are respectable people. So that's why you don't want you are not like me that he is speaking only. So Periwala selling dates in streets. So poor guy. 
he was sitting there at that time maybe he was in the street and that was time of prayer and he entered the masjid and put his basket somewhere yes and he was hungry so he had one date in his mouth and he was chewing it when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said it who will take it he jumped and with the thrill with the spirit he said ana ya rasulullah when he said ana the death came out there so sahaba they were said his name is habib ibn zaid radiyallahu ta'ala an what his name habib ibn zaid radiyallahu ta'ala an he said habib kama hal why you are Yes, you should have waited. If you are dead, then say. He said, "Follow sabakani had." This was Iman. He said, "If he was there, if somebody else would have jumped before me, so then it means that I will miss the opportunity." And he was aware of that going to that shaitan, that just like putting yourself on stake. He was a badmash guy. He was a gangster. He said, "Me, Ya Rasulullah." Rasulullah said, "Sir, sir, take." He went. <clears throat> When he arrived at the area of that Musaylam, he had written letter to Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم, waiting for response. So when he entered there, Musaylam asked him, "Who are you?" He said, "Habib ibn Zayd." He said, "How you came here?" He said, "I brought you the response of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam." Said, "Okay, give me." He gave it. He was able to read it, but as a protocol, he gave it to secretary. The secretary started, "Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim." Mim Muhammad in Rasulillah. Then he started because after that he was titled as Kazab. Yes. That was a very civilized bad word for that khabis, cultured word for that khabis. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was not using f words. So he stopped. He said, "Go ahead." So he said, "Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim." Mim Muhammad ibn Rasulillah ila Musalam. He said, "This is not a guy." If I will pronounce Al Kazab, so far he will hit me. How you did pronounce it in front of me, calling me Kazab? He said, "Go ahead." Say, "Sir Muhammad bin Muhammad Rasulillah, Ila Musalam Al Kazab." Amma baad fa inna al arza lilla yurisuha min yasha wa al hakim tu lil muttaqin. Sir, ha? Adani Kazab, this guy called me Kazab. He said to Habib, "Your companion called me Kazab." Said, "Why you are losing your temper? Why you are becoming angry? Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has not done anything wrong. He showed you what you are. <laughs> what the man? He said, 'What the halak hak hakikat.'" That's your reality. That you are a kazab. He said, "Judge your tongue." What are you saying? He said, "Yes." What my prophet has written. You ask me, I'm explaining that. So he had the sword in his hand. He cut it one hand off. Habib ne zayd was yalla o talahan. And then he cut it the other one. And said, "Turn around. Look." So when he looked, the army, the soldiers, having their swords made, said, "I will say that the Allah Talan bleeding both hands because hands are there on the ground." He said, "At the house of Nabi Asafi, stupid guy, you are frightening us. We are the slaves of Allah and followers of Muhammad." We don't know what fear is. We don't 
know the meaning of fear. He was saying, I'm attacked by a way of what a person this is. So he said that you don't know what I can do? He said, yes. The utmost you can do, you're going to kill me? He said, yes, I'll kill you. He said, let me tell you. That was my reality. He said, every day after Salat al Fajr, when I pray Fajr with Rasulullah and I go in for my job roaming around and selling dates. So after prayer, every prayer at Fajr time, I make a dua, Allahumma rizqni shahadatan fi sabiyyik. Oh Allah, give me shahadat in your path. So it means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted my dua and he killed him. So that Husayn al Qazab, he had a big following. Banu Hanifa, almost the whole tribe, he followed him. They followed him. Only one guy and his group, they were stable in this regard. So now Ibn Asar, radiallahu ta'ala, who was a chief as well. So Sumaim ibn Asal, he was captured by Sahaba, Rizwanullah ibn Ajma'i. And they were, he was brought to Masjid Nabawi, to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that this guy is a strange man from Yamama. And we think that he has a malefied intention, roaming around here. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, they tie him to the pillar. So they tied him to the pillar. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was passing by. He said, Maza in the kaya sumama. Sumama, what you have? So he said, Ya Muhammad, in ahsanta ahsanta ila shakir. Wa in qatalta qatalta zadam. Wa in aradta al-mala fasal tuk. These people who are very to the point people, you know what I'm saying? We are trying to be to the point. Got it. But as I told you that I'm a freelancer, Mullah. So that's why I'm taking this exit and that exit in my bayan. Yes, for my good and for your good as well. Yes, to connect different issues to what we are talking about. Because if you will not read the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to every walk of life, so then what? Story? So you are relating story or a qassas? My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam. He said, Ya Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you will do favor, that will be a favor to someone who will be grateful. And if you are going to kill, so this blood is not that cheap. In the first sentence, he was showing his quality. That I am not an ungrateful person to one who will do a favor to me. But in the second sentence, he was giving a threat that my killing has consequences. Because I am not a common layman. I am a chief of my tribe. And if you have tied me here looking for some ransom, so just ask how much. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa left. Next time when Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was coming for next prayer, he stopped by and he said, Mata in the Qasimah, any good news which you have? So he repeated the same thing. For the third time when he said it, in, at another prayer time, so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to Ali, Ali said, Ya Rasulullah. He said, just untie him, let him go. So Ali radiallahu ta'ala opened him, he went out. He had his bag with, took his bag, went out, went to the close by garden in Medina. He took shower there put on his new dress, came back straight to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, give me your hand. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
He said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. He said, for Allah. Kana wajhuka abghazu al-wujuhi ilayya ala wajhi al-arz. Before my release, your face was the utmost ugliest and hated face to me on earth. The moment you released me, قُلُوبُ الْعِبَادِ بَيْنَ إِسْبَعَتِ الرَّحْمَانِ يُقَلِّقُهَا كِفَ يَشَاءُ Allah turned my heart to such an extent that when you released me and I looked at your face, so that was the utmost beloved face in my eyes and in my heart all over the world. You never forced me not ask me to accept Islam. But that is Allah who turned my heart towards Islam and towards you. So that Sumar ibn Asal radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he showed stability in that big fitna. So in the time of Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when he became Khalifa, and at that time, as you know, that in any area, when a leader or a great personality passes away, so naturally it might happen here. Yes. Because people are united behind the great personality. But now when their door is gone, they have dispersed. Tasharud and Tashweed. So that happened after the death of the Prophet Some tribes, uprising started there. Some others, they said, we are not going to pay zakat to the treasury. Some people, they claim to be prophets after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa One of them was this Musaylam. He did it in his lifetime as well. Some others, the Munafiqeen, they also started doing conspiracies against Islamic State. And this was the Iman of Abu Bakr that he launched mission against all of them. Even certain Sahaba and from amongst them was Umar he said that Khalifa Rasul we should not open those many fronts against rights against Mutanabbi'een, Mani'een Zakat, Munafiqeen, and you are sending the brigade or the army of Osama ibn Zayd also towards Roma. So at least, number one, you should stop sending this army of Osama. Because fighter generals are in his army. Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anh, he said that even if the wild animals of Uhud and Sela will tear me into pieces and smash me, I'm not going to stop this army. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he gave me a wasiya, wajahizu jesha Osama. Wajahizu jesha Osama. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam arranged that army, under the leadership of Usama ibn Zayd, the young man, when they went out of Medina and stationed somewhere, they got the news that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fell sick. So they waited there that what happened. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away, they got the news, they sent a message to Abu Bakr that we want to come back to Medina. Abu Bakr said, no way. You people have been sent by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered me to do this Osama. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam burial was done, Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala was told by Sahaba, especially by Umar, not to send that army. Some others said, you have to change the leadership because he is a young man. Major Sahaba are there, so you should put a warrior 
एक्सपर्टीज जनरल टू लीड द आर्मी अब बकर सैन हुआ यह ओसामा इब्ने जैद वाज अपॉइंटेड बाय मी यू आर आस्किंग मी टू चेंज ही वाज अपॉइंटेड बाय रसूलुल्लाह सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम एट द सेम वॉरियर जनरल्स वर अंडर हिज लीडरशिप ही सेड ओसामा विल बी लीडिंग एंड द आर्मी विल गो फॉर श्योर एंड ही हिमसेल्फ केम आउट ऑफ मदीना टू दैट स्टेशन he addressed the army and what he said that when you arrive there fa aridu alayhim al islam first you people should invite them towards islam wa illa fa ila al jizya if they did not accept islam so then ask them for jizya jizya actually a protection tax and by that the people become the citizens of islamic state and they are called protected citizens they are not muslims but they are protected citizens of islamic state and if they do not so for some mullah Then say Bismillah and go ahead and start fighting. Then he said, "Wala taqtulu walidan, wala shaykhan, wala sharhan, wala imraatan, wala rahiban, waqifan fi sumiatihi, wala taqtau shajaran, wala haywanan." illa ma ihtajtu let them go ahead but do not kill a child a woman in old men the religious man who is strict to his worship place combine together all these kinds kill not non combatant people kill not non competent people because killing of human that is not allowed in islam competent that case is different and kill not their animals for no reason because islam does not allow fasad wallahu la yuhibbu al fasad inna allah la yuhibbu al mufsidin do not cut their trees for no reason illa ma ihtaj If you are in need of food, so you can slaughter it. Any one of them. If you are in need of firewood, you can cut their tree. But for no reason, don't do that. Now, my dear respected brother, look at me. We are living in a world. People are trying to teach us humanity. Oh, so bro! When all of you were animals. that was muhammad who taught humanity to the whole world sallallahu alaihi wasallam you are telling us and teaching us peace harmony equality human rights bro what do you know about human rights and humanity yet they are bro yes. my dear respected brothers and sisters in islam abu bakr radhiyallahu ta'ala when the army was departing and marching ahead osama was riding his horse was he allah and the general abu bakr was walking on his feet osama said ya khalifa ar rasul either you should take a ride or i will come down and walk in with you this is a disrespect that the elder the companion of the prophet his advisor in the whole life now his khalifa he is walking and i am riding the horse so said na abu bakr told him you are the leading general you are the lead you will be riding i will be walking with you and thus abu bakr gave a very diplomatic message to the people 
Because when that type of respect was given to that young man, Osama ibn Zaid, who was in the 20s, and Khalifa al Rasul is walking with him, then he said, Fi Amanillah. Go ahead. So, anyhow, Sayyidina Omar, he brought forth another reservation that Ya Khalifa al Rasul. Fighting those who are not paying zakat. I think that is not allowed. They are Muslims. They say la ilaha illallah. They are praying. The only thing they say we are not paying zakat. Sayyidina Abu Bakr ta'ala He said to him two things. Number one. Little bit attitude he showed. Because Umar was his close associate. Yes. You are not? Yes. Not like it's loud. Yes. 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 Because the problem is nowadays, I don't know what happened to Muslims or let me say so called Muslims. <coughs> this social media, social gutter. Unsocial gutter. Yeah. This social media, unsocial gutter. Say. <laughs> this is unsocial gutter. Gutter cannot be a social one. Yes, if it is not smelling, that social. But this is smelling a lot. Bad smell is spreading everywhere. So people are talking about Sahaba inna lindahi wa inna ilayhi rajao. Ye moor musur ki dal. My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam. So Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an. He looked at Omar and he said a jab. Jabbar fi jahiliyat khawar fi Islam. A man who was the strongest person in jahiliyat. That much coward and weak in Islam. You should have been much more stronger. So that was the attitude. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu He was quiet. And then he told him. Fawallahi. لو منعوني عقالا وفي رواية عناقا يودونه إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لقاتلكم. I swear by Allah, if they will stop giving that عناق a small goat, they were paying to the treasury in the time of رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الزكاة. Now they are not going to do that. أو عقالا. عقال is actually that much rope, piece of rope. Arab used to tie the leg of camel bit. Means small piece of rope. If they will stop giving that even, I will launch a fight against them. And he said, For one lie, Man farraqa bayna salati wa zakati qatalkum. You say they are praying? So prayer is for us. Zakat is not for us. If somebody will deny the concept of prayer, I have to fight against it. So if somebody will deny the concept of zakat, I will fight again. See, now I will say, yes, Bismillah. I did. Mean. But that was the reservation. He expressed that very openly. But when he got convinced, he said, yes, I am here. Whatever you order me, I will do. So anyhow, Muslim al kazab Sayyidina Abu Bakr launched an army against him. His army was also very good fighters. But Sahaba they fought against him wholeheartedly. But in the fight, so many Hufas, Qurra and Walama Sahaba, they got martyred. It is said 70 plus great scholars of Sahaba. So Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala and he came to Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala and he said, Ya Khalifa al-Rasul, Adrik hazi al-Umma, inna al-harb qad ishtadda yawm al-Yamama. That the Yamama fight or war was very shadid. If the ulama are getting kept in such a way, I have a fear we will lose Quran. He said, what do you want me to do? 
He said that a fish need to compile Quran. It doesn't mean that Quran was not written. Keep in mind, I have written a book in Usul Tafsir in Arabic. Another one in Urdu, a third one in Pashto, a fourth one in English. So there I mentioned that 62 Sahaba Ridwanullah Amal Yaman they were appointed by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to write down Quran only. So whenever Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was receiving Wahi of Quran, and any one of these 62 was available. So he used to take his position and to get ready. Because Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whenever he was receiving Quran, so suddenly he covered himself like this. And the Sahaba were aware of that now he is receiving Quran. Jibreel is there. Got it. Once again, air bomb. <laughs> yes? That air bomb started. Jibreel is there. And the moment he opened himself, at that time, that Sayyidah Aisha anha, says, sometime he was at home and this uh, case like that happened. Fakuntu akifu wara azahari. I was standing behind him. تَتَحَرَّكُ مِنْهُ بَوَادِرُهُ تَتَحَرَّكُ مِنْهُ بَوَادِرُهُ His neuro system and his muscles it was shivering like this because the pressure he was feeling at that time God, and once again yes, the electronic devices that when the pressure is too much or for a long time you are using it it starts sounding it does? Yes. Loudly, yes. yes, yes, because I am student of Imam Waliullah, so I have to bring it close to your approach. That's why I'm giving you the visible examples. Imam Rahmatullah says that you have to make the mansus ma'akul and the ma'akul mahsus. You have to make the mansus ma'akul and the ma'akul mahsus. Mansus, something in Quran and Hadith, that's mansus. So you have to make it in a reasonable way so the people can understand it. If the ma'pool is also beyond their approach, so you have to give them a visible material example. So now, I am very thankful to this technology in one sense. That it made us to understand what is mentioned here in Quran, how we can explain it, <coughs> keeping into consideration or taking into consideration the modern technology of computers. My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam. Sadhu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, How you advise me to do such a thing, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has not done it. But he himself says, Summa sharhallahu sadri, lima shurihalahu sadru umar. Then Allah opened my chest and breast for what? The chest of Umar was opened by Allah. Fadaha Zayd ibn Sabit. Alam Sabit radiyallahu ta'ala an. You can call him the master inscriber of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Zayd ibn Sabit. Alam Sabit radiyallahu an. So he summoned him. Abu Bakr told him Zayd, we have to compile Quran in one place. Because one Katib he has one portion, another Katib has another portion, a third Katib has another portion. We have to compile it in one copy. He said the same thing. Ya Khalifa al Rasul, Kefatamurni bi shayin lam yasnahu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How you order me a thing, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has not done it. Zayd ibn Sabit. He himself says, I was sitting there. Then Allah opened my breast and chest for the same thing Allah has opened the chest of Umar first and the chest of Abu Bakr. So he said, I started. So he himself, he was the hafiz of the whole Quran. He himself, he had the written Quran with him. But he was not relying upon that as well. Uh, only. So he used to go to different Sahaba. Rizwanullah Ali Majraim. 
asking them if he has this ayah in his memory or in his writings. He said, for two ayahs, I was looking somewhere. I had it, but I was looking for a support. If somebody has it in written shape, Hatta wajadduhuma عند أبي خزيمة الأنصاري رضي الله تعالى He said that I found that in written shape with Abu Khudayim Ansari رضي الله عنه لقد جاءكم رسول من أنفسكم عزيز عليه ما عنتم حريص عليكم بالمؤمنين الرؤوف الرحيم فإن تولوا فقول حسبي الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش عظيم respected brothers and sisters in Islam. So anyhow, that was the case of Musaylama. But I was referring to the written Quran in sequence. In this sequence, it was written by Sayyidina Usman Ta'ala later on. Hosef Abdul Yaman, he was editing General Dear Weir. Weir. Actually, I am clicking your insights. Yes, I am trying to inspire you for study of me. You know what I am saying? I am not a bookseller. I have nothing to do with the money by God. I am giving my own money for printing. I am supporting my son here to take it and print this book. Talijan is sitting here. I give him money, the Varama dear who are writing my books and they are printing it, they send it to them. Because another book is ready and they have a shot of money. So give it to them, let them do it. So anyhow, but to inspire you to study, that is my duty. Yes, this book of mine, I named it, Waqafa Billahi Shaheeda Muhammad Rasulullah. This is the name of the book. The name of the book is what? Waqafa Billahi Shaheeda Muhammad Rasulullah. Allah is sufficient to witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. This I'm seeing. It's English version, not English translation. It's English version. That is much more bigger than that. Because there we were in need of further more details. So that is the apostle of mercy. And its Arabic version is much more bigger than that. Will be in three volumes or four volumes. So the Arabic one, I named it as Fahmu Sirat Ibn Quran Bal Quran Bil Sirat. So, anyhow, Osman radiallahu ta'ala an, in his time, in the battle of Armenia and Azerbaijan, adjacent states, Arme still Armenia and Azerbaijan are there in Nagorno-Karabakh is also there. Once again the dispute is going on in Nagorno-Karabakh between Armenia and Azerbaijan. Armenia is a Christian state and Azerbaijan is Muslim state. What type of Muslim they are? No. Majority they are Shias. But unfortunately, unfortunately, whatever you can say, politics is something else. Politics is something else. Armenia is supported by Iran. And Azerbaijan is supported by Israel. You know what I'm saying? You know that or you don't know? Yes, that is political case. Because Iran feels that that is our boundary. If another Shia state will happen and they get power, maybe we will be in, in danger. Got it? Got it or not? Yes. yes. And on the other hand, Israel wants to cause a trouble for Iran, so they are supporting the Azerbaijan. So anyhow, that, where are you living? Not in this world. You are living in this world. Be aware of what is going on. We are becoming emotional very soon. Oh, 
Brother, this is a serious matter. You have to think seriously about issues. So my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, for example, if someone, I don't want to condemn anybody, but if someone is a common layman, maybe in his field he's expert or whatever, yes, if he said a little bit about Islam, a good one, so people are trying to make him Abu Bakr. We are becoming a Muslim. On the other hand, we the mullahs day and night attacking about Islam, but people are putting us down. <laughs> if talk about Islam for two minutes, they're using that title that now he is a mujahid in Islam. So what's wrong with me that I am talking day and night about that Islam? That is emotionalism. We are not going and looking at things in depth. So my dear respected brother and sisters in Islam, Armenia and Azerbaijan, big battle happened there, Hulaif Abdul Yaman radiallahu ta'ala man. He came to Sayyidina Osman from Armenia and Azerbaijan. And he said, Ya Amir al Islamic State is getting vast and spacious. New areas are conquered. Different uh, culture, civilization, languages, people, different dialects. So in Quran they are fighting because dialect of every language is different. For example, I Pashtun. From the very beginning, my mother tongue is what? Pashto. Somebody said to me that that is father tongue also, but why it is said mother is a man and mother tongue? Yes? Have you ever heard father tongue? No. What do people say? Mother tongue. Mother. mother. That mother tongue. That why not father tongue? So I said if the mother will allow the father to speak, so then he will learn. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but the case is that mother is the first teacher of her kid. He or she is in the lips of mother. She is the first one who is talking to, yes, to the child. So that's why it is called mother tongue. So every mother tongue and what's its alphabets are maharaj or so naturally your dialect is developed on that. Now when those buttons are fixed there, and later on you are speaking another language, so for sure, for sure, the people will feel, oh, he has accent. That is next word. My dear respected brothers, so Hosef Abdul Yaman says because of accent, sometimes they fight, you are wrong. He said, you are wrong. I am okay. You are okay. Now look, the Egyptian. The Egyptian. They spell Jim as Gim. One of our teachers from Jamal Azhar. You are teaching us Balala. So once in his uh, lecture, he was referring to an ayah. So as you know, whatever the slang language is, your normal speech is in that one. So suddenly he clicked the slang. In lecture, otherwise in lecture, and he was a Sheikh of Balala, very Balir man. So he was Badir and very arrogant as well. Very fussy man. Passed away from Allah. So he said, وَكَمَا قَالَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ وَجَاهِدُ فِي اللَّهِ حَكَّ بِهَادِهِ هُوَ جَتَبَاكُمْ وَمَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حَرَقٍ مِنْ لِتَعْبِيكُمْ He said, مَعَذْرَةَ الْفَضِلَ الدُّطُورِ He said, إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَجَاهِدُ فِي اللَّهِ حَكَّ جِهَادِهِ هو جتباكم وما جعل عليكم في الدين من حرج من لتأبيكم إبراهيم هو سماكم مسلمين. so first he recited his leg وجاهدوا في النحكة جهادي. 
got it, and then he made a joke. He said, accent, slang language. As you know, the Arab, they don't have P and P. We in Pashto, Persian, and uh, Urdu, and Oriental languages, we have the P and the P in English also. But the Arab, so they say Yaban, not Japan. What? Yaban? Yes. And then they don't say Pakistan, they say Pakistan. <laughs> Instead of Pa, they pronounce Ba. So he said that uh, I was there in Britain for my PhD. So he said that I came to Bazaar. There was no place to park my car. So I said that one store in front of that, the guy was standing there. So I asked him, that can I bark here? <laughs> can I bark here? So he said that this is a free country, you can bark anywhere. <laughs>
Another chapter is regarding the Jews, Banu Qainuqa, Banu Nazir, and Banu Quraiza. They were living in Medina. And another chapter is regarding relation of Jews and Muslims. So in that part, it is written, In the Muslimin, Ma'al Yahud, Ummatun Wahida. So there the Ummah is not in Mustalah meaning. That Muslims and Yahud of the state of Medina, they are one nation. Got it? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned there that all these non-Muslims who are living in this Islamic state, lahum ma'lana wa alayhim ma'alayna. They have all the rights we the Muslim have. And they have all the responsibilities we the Muslim have. <coughs> then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned there, الخمر لهم كالخل لنا والخنزير لهم كالشات لنا Wine for them is just like vinegar for us. You buy and sell vinegar or not? Yes. Because it has a ring. It is malt. So for them, the wine is malt. If a Muslim will destroy the <coughs> wine of a non-Muslim in Islamic state, he is bound to pay the damages. Got it? Al-khamru lahum kal-khalli lana wal-khinziru lahum kashati lana You cannot take a plea. That is haram. Oh, that is haram for you, not for him. For him, that is a part of wealth. You have to pay the damages. He can take you to a court of law, Islamic law, and the Qazi will decree accordingly. You have to pay him that much. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Utrukuh wa ma yadinun. Leave them alone along with their own dream. So non-Muslims in Islamic state, they are free to do their worship the way they are doing in their worship place or not. Can you stop it? No. Now look, at that time, they had taken a plea that this was a Ram Mandar. Yes? So when they demolished it, so once again, as you know that we the Muslims are very emotional. And especially means that the, 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 the hostilities are there between Pakistan and India forever. So the Muslims in Pakistan, they came to roads, burning the government properties. <laughs> and not only burning the government properties, they demolished a few mandars of Hindus. And not only that in Sawa, there is a Gurdwara and worship place and temple of Sikhs. And even though the Sikhs were there in the procession with the Muslims, but emotional, they don't think. So they burnt that. The Sardar just said, oh brother, we are with you. Why you burnt <laughs> out? Oh, they said, sorry, we don't know that that is yours. <laughs> we don't know that is yours. We will rebuild it. We will rebuild it. So now, is nowadays even in modern world, according to the charter of you, I know, worship places of all people is safe and sound in any country. We have this Muslim. This is a Muslim country. Say, no, no. but the government, our government, they are protecting our masjid or not? Yes. If you have any threat to masjid and you will call, the police will come or not? Yes. After 9 11, almost every masjid. Yes, especially at Juma time, especially in our area, sensitivity was too much. Yes, so the patrolling was going on. Yes, around the bus. Yes, two, three cars every Friday. As long as the prayer was going on, so patrolling was going on. Because to protect that is required by constitution. So anyhow, when they demolished that, so then the Pakistani government, 400 mandirs and temples of Hindus. The Pakistani government from national treasury, from the Hazana, they <laughs> built it. That's what we can do. We are bound to be built it. Yes, because you are our citizens. <laughs> My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he established a new community. 
He established a new state. He established a new system. Then, when the new state was established, the people of Mecca and all those non-Muslims who had malefied or malice against Muslims and Rasulullah they started plotting against that. Rasulullah and Sahaba, they were on red alert. Not only that, a few times they plotted to assassinate the Prophet a few people, they were captured red-handed. Around the Masjid of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sahaba Rizwanullah Alayhi Majma'i. They used to guard the house of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at night. Then the ayah came. Ya ayyuhar Rasulu Balligh ma unzila ilayk min rabbik. فَإِنْ لَمْ تَفْعَلْ فَمَا بَلَّغْتَ رِسَالَةَ وَاللَّهُ يَعْصِمُكَ مِنَ النَّاسِ Convey the message wholeheartedly and fully. Without reservation, Allah will protect you. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called the Sahaba. And he said, from now onward, no God. Because when Allah has taken the responsibility, وَاللَّهُ يَعْصِمُكَ مِنَ النَّاسِ In physical world, that was our tadbir. But now it went from Tadbir to Taqdeer. Allah already decreed, Wallahu Ya'asa wa Kamehman Nas. So there is no need of God anymore. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whenever he felt from somewhere a prizing is going on, he used to send a platoon of army there. Just have a flag march there in that area. So the people will get the message that we are on red alert. Uprising, you will come to it. But, the hikmah and wisdom of the Prophet was <coughs> that before Badr, he never sent any expedition of Ansars. He was sending an army of Muhajirin only. Because he was thinking that Ansar have done a lot. They sheltered us. They shared their property with us, the Mujahideen, the Muhajirin. Now to send them to fight, that will be way too much for them. They would have been happy, but Rasulullah as a diplomacy, he was not sending them. And not only that, from Muhajirin also, he was sending his close relatives, like Ali ibn Abi Talib as a leader, Sayyidina Hamza as a leader, Abdullah ibn Jahash, his first cousin, as a leader, Ubaid ibn Haris, his first cousin, so he was sending expedition like this. What a man he was. He was a statesman. He was knowing how to take the issues. My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Mushrikeen of Makkah, they were attacking different pastures of Madinites to cause a problem to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taking away their cattle. So then they get bothered and tell Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Yeah, Brother Rasulullah, please, if you can leave the area, because I we are facing too much. We are losing our cattle. They were doing that. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for a while, he was not retaliating in this regard. But then he said, Now it is too much. So then he said, okay. Their caravans are going from Mecca to Sham Wai Medina. That is the route. So Prophet ﷺ sent a group that their caravan is going to Sham. Just stop it. And take whatever they have. To stop them from these type of attacks. But when they arrived in the place concerned, so the caravan already passed. Rasulullah Sallallahu said, okay, let them go, they are coming back. So when they were coming back, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he himself took a group of people to stop the caravan coming back towards Mecca under the leadership of Abu Sufyan 
400 camels fully loaded with every type of stuff. And Abu Sufyan, he had the fear because he got the news that we passed the area but Muslims came there to stop us. Now coming back, he has a fear. So he sent someone to Mecca asking for help, protection, support, more people. The guy went to Mecca and he was crying, Wa Help! 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 He said, what happened? He said, Muhammad is going to stop the caravan and to snatch everything. So they are the elders, they got together. They said, we have to get rid of Muhammad and his people once for all. They arranged an army of 1,000 people. Fully equipped with every type of weapon of that time. Here from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came out only to stop the caravan. So it means that they had, they had only the swords. Uh, please. Only the swords and the arrows. Here Abu Sufyan, he planned to change the route. So the normal route of freeway he left and he went all the way to the shore of Mediterranean. So it means no stoppage. But here Rasulullah got the news that an army already departed. Last night I mentioned Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib. That he did not disclose himself that he is a Muslim. He was there in Medina, uh, in Mecca. He informed Rasulullah that an army is coming. I am also there in that army. I am one of the soldiers. But an army is coming. Rasulullah here when he got the news, he asked the Sahaba what to be done. Should we go ahead on this route? which upon the army is proceeding towards Medina, or should we change the route and go after the caravan? Mostly the Sahaba said, we have not come out of Medina well equipped to fight. So we should go after the caravan. If we will keep the caravan, caravan is unable to fight us. Number one. Number two. That is 400 camels fully loaded. We are in need of some wealth and something. We will get a lot. Will be there some weapons as well. But Rasulullah and some other Sahaba, they said whatever will be the result, we should go on this route and face the army. So when they arrived in Badr, they found that Mushrikeen are stationed already there. Rasulullah got stationed there as well. Anybody who has seen Badr? Yes, yes you have. Yes, you have. <laughs> so, let me tell you a joke. <laughs> Last year we were there in Badr. I was in strong need of pee. So, I was telling him and other brothers at Hof and Masjid Arish where to close by was the tent of Rasulullah or the trellis of Rasulullah at Badr time. We call it Chapar. What? Chapar. In Arabic that's called Arish. What? Arish. Arish. In English that's called trellis, not terrace. <laughs> so Sahaba arranged it trellis of wood and straws and grass and things like that for Rasulullah to be there inside. Behind the army. Muslim army was in front for to be safe. And Sa'ad ibn Mu'az radiyallahu Sa'ad ibn Mu'az radiyallahu ta'ala says at that night I found that who is the utmost bravest person among us. He said that was Abu Bakr. Not even for one second, that man sat down. 
He was roaming around the treasures of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, having a sword on red alert. I said, Abu Bakr, take a rest. I will do that. He said, No, no, I am okay. I am okay. Situation was very tough. The Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. Abdul Rahman ibn Awf radiyallahu ta'ala was sitting in the door of the trellis. There was a covered tre trellis from all around. Abdul Rahman was there. Sayyidina Umar at midnight he came there. And he was trying to enter. Abdul Rahman ibn Awf stopped him. Sir Abdul Rahman? He said yes. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَا يَدْخُلَنَّ عَلَيَّ اللَّيْلَةَ أَحَدْ Nobody should enter to my terrace tonight. So that's why I stopped. So Sayyidina Umar said, Oh, that is the order of Rasulullah, that's okay. But I am feeling something. Can I see Rasulullah in between the cracks to get satisfied that he is okay? Because I cannot sleep. So I want to be satisfied that he is okay. He said, Yes, for that there is no restriction. So he said that I saw Rasulullah was praying inside. Now Abu Bakr was roaming around there. He also tried to go inside. Abu Rahman stopped him as well. Because that was his duty. No one should enter to my trellis tonight. Abu Bakr said, Abu Rahman, Ta'arifu lastu bi ahad. You know that I am not no one. Me and my closest to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, that's to be ahad. I am not no one. Abdul Rahman said, yes. So he entered. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at that time, he was standing, having his cloak like this. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his hand was almost straight like this. In dua. His cloak fell down. And he was saying, Allah in Tuhlik has a Usaba, Lan Tawbada fi Arzi Abada. Wallah, if you will kill these people which I brought, that is the output of my labor for 15 years. These 313 people, that is all the production of my efforts. If you will kill these people in this battle, until the day of judgment, you will never be worshipped because they are the foundation. These people of Badr, they are the foundation. Based on their efforts, Islam will be spread. Now, Alhamdulillah, we are Muslims. That is because of those Sahaba. Keep in mind one thing. They were Muslims because of Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sahaba were Muslims because of whom? Rasulullah said, we are Muslims because of Sahaba. <coughs> Rasulullah said, Islam came to us. He went to Indonesia. Who spread his message to our Lord? Say, Sahaba is on the Ali Our Allah, he praised them a lot. So in the end, he said, Kya gharaz me kya batao, tum ko sahara nashi kya te. Gharaz. Me kya batao, tum ko sahara nashi kya te. Jaha giro, jaha bino, jaha bano, jaha nara. Jaha giro, jaha bino, jaha bano, jaha nara. They were people. Because of them, this world was beautiful. Because of them, Islam spread it all over the world. In Hajjatul Wada, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he gave his sermon, on 8th, Yawmut Tarbiya, he gave his sermon there in Baitullah. On 9th, he gave his sermon there in Arafat. On 10th, he gave another sermon there in Mina. All together in Hajjatul Wada, he gave five sermons. Some small talks were going as well. As well. So some were they have mentioned seven sermons. What we know, the favorite address, this whole address of Duna is not of Arafat only. Muhaddisin club it together. That's what he said in Hajj in all these five days. 
So anyhow, my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he stretched his hands like this and raised it. So his cloak fell down. He didn't know that Abu Bakr standing behind me. So Abu Bakr lifted it up, picked it up, and put it on his shoulders once again. And he said, Hasbukal an ya Rasulullah. Fainallah wa adaka nasr. Ya Rasulullah, that's enough. Allah has already promised you that he will help. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he sat down. Anyhow, the battle happens. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, laqad dasarakum wallahu bi badrin. Wa antum azilla. Fattaku Allah la'allakum tuflihun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Indeed, Allah help you there in Badr. You were 300, they were more than 1,000. You had weapons of normal use, they had the heavy weapon, RWMD of that time, weapon of mass destruction. Because they came for fight, you were not for fight, you were going to cage the caravan. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped you people. لَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ بِبَدْرٍ وَأَنْتُمْ أَزِلَّ فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ So I was there. Masjid Arish, a renovation was going on. You were supposed to pray Salat al-Zuhur there. But he went inside, he said that there is no place for prayer and no for wudu because the renovation is going on. But I was in need of peace. So I was telling the brothers, actually, I am not feeling relaxed. To be here, maybe there is the Qadam of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the Qadam of Abu Bakr or any other Sahab. Yes, that only because of Adab and respect. I was not feeling relaxed. That is not something forbidden there or prohibited. But I told them that I don't feel relaxed. Then the guide, he was showing us this is this place in brother, this place in brother, this place in brother. So then he took us to Qalib. Imam Bukhari and other muhaddisin then narrated, yes, that there was a trench or well, natural well. Ali, these dead kuffar, some of them, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they threw them in this well. Abu Jahl was amongst them. Utba, Sheba, Walid and things. So he threw all of them there and then they buried them there. So he said, this is Qalib. Here is Abu Jahl, I say, a good place for me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, naturally good. So anyhow, my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave victory to Muslims, that was such a message to the whole world that, oh my God, these people are fighting for death. People are fighting to save their life. But these people are looking for their death. So how to counter them? And 70 kuffar got killed. 70 of them, they were captured. When they were brought to Medina, <clears throat> That was the first ever organized and disciplined war. Lot of rules were not introduced yet. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fada'a Abu Bakr wa Umar. He called Abu Bakr and Umar. Mata ya fa'ri What should be done with these guys? And once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from yesterday you remember I mentioned when Prophet Sallallahu came back from Taif, Ahnaz ibn Shuraik and Amr ibn Awas, they were unable to give him protection, <coughs> to take enmity of all the Meccans. But both ibn Adi, he said yes. And I told you that he brought his sons, they were riding the horses, having the swords, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to Baitullah. Both ibn Adi was not Muslim. He was from Banu Nawfal, cousin tribe, and Abu Jal came to him. You gave him protection or you believed him? He said, no, well, Ajar. 
I have given a protection. I have not accepted Islam. So he was a strong man. Abu Jahl was unable to counter him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was not an ihsan faramosh. Hal jazao al-ihsan? Illa al-ihsan. So he was passing by. He said to Sahaba, لو كان المطعم رعديا حيا ثم كلمني في هؤلاء النتناء لتركتهم له رواه البخاري that if Mutlaq bin Adi would have been alive and he would have asked me for these people to release them for sure I would have released he was keeping in mind his ihsan even though he was a kafir but that kafir did an ihsan to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after his death he was thinking if he was alive and he would have asked me for these 70 people to release them. I would have released because he had done Ihsan to me. God, that is a perfect human character. And we, if somebody does Ihsan to us, yes, we think like as uh, we got Hanima, like right at some point. Oh, brother, keep in mind Ihsan and Ihsan. Ihsan is Ihsan. That's a well-known culture, not only in one nation or one tribe. Human in general, they know Ihsan. And they appropriate as much as they can. My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam. So Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, Dekhya Rasulullah, Haulai abna'una, wa abna'u ammina, wa amamuna. They are our Cousins, they are our uncles. If we will do good to them, so I think that will be good. So Rasulullah Sallallahu said, Omar, what do you think? Sayyidina Omar said, Ya Rasulullah, Umul ladhina kazzabuk. A different answer. Umul ladhina kazzabuk. Wa akhrajuk. Wa akhrajuna. Wa qataluna. They are the people who denied you, who rejected you, and your message. They tortured Bilal and Ammar and every one of us. Whomsoever they were able to do, they did it. They came on the way here close to Madinah to fight us. So he said, Ya Rasulullah, if you will order me to kill my relative, and you will order Abbas and Ali and Hamza to kill their relatives to start with our own. So the other are just like Muli Gajar. Yes, we will cut them very easily. If I will kill my uncle and my own real cousin, so others, I don't care. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa smiled and he said to Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr, inna masalaka masal Isa. Your nature will be nature of Isa. He was inside the cave. People plotted to crucify him. And inside he was crying to Allah. In fa inna wa in fa inna kanta al hakim. If you are going to punish them, they are your slaves. But if you will forgive them, so you are the Almighty. You know the wisdom. Who can ask you? So it means his tendency was just forgive them. And he said to Umar radiallahu ta'ala an. That your nature is the nature of Nuh. When he became angry, he said, I don't want to see any one of them alive. Yes, even their building and their houses. That's why they got flooded. Even the foundation of their houses were not seen there. But it, because Nuh alayhi salatu was saying, no, I had their foundation even. I had their structure and their walls. <coughs> because 950 years of labor, that is too much. For the sake of Allah, easy. Mm -hmm. We cannot conceive it for 950 minutes to face such like difficulties for Allah as Nuh alayhi salam was facing for 950 years. And he convinced only 82 people in 950 years. <laughs> so it means they were dirty creatures. So he said, Rabbi, la tazara ala al-ardi min al-kafirin al-dayyara. Inna ka in tazara mu zillu. I fear about these Muslims, they will turn them around. 
So just, just try them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, done. They are, they are gone. So they were gone. My dear respected brothers, here inside Medina, the Jews, they were also plotting against Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they became crazy that they defeated their big army. So Banu Qaynuqa, a tribe of Jews, they used to cause trouble to Muslims. And not only that, mostly they were goldsmiths. They were ironsmiths, lohar, sonar, professional people, businessmen. They had their own bazaar in their own area. A Muslim lady was there to sell her ornaments. She was sitting there in Awash, a villain Yehudi. He came and tied her big garment to her neck. She didn't felt it. When she stood up, so her bed became naked. So a Muslim, he watched all that scene. He jumped on that for the marsh and he killed him. So the other two, they jumped on that Muslim and they killed him. And thus, a battle was to start. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam along with Sahaba came there. And he ordered Banu Hayrafa, I am going to kill you people. Because you are traitors. You agreed on that constitution. And now you are doing this. It's high treason. And what is the punishment for high treason all over the world? Execution. But Ibn Ubay Khadis, a very dirty character. You know him? Abdullah Ibn Ubay Ibn Salul. He approached the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the Munafiq. And he was saying, Ya Muhammad, if you will allow, you say, allow them to live here. No more I'm going to kill him. I'll kill them. He said, then please, turn them out. He said, okay. So they left the area and went to Khaybar. Then one year later, the battle of Uhud happened. When Mushrikeen arranged 3,000 plus army to take revenge of Badr, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he addressed his Sahaba, the big army is coming to attack Medina. What do you think? So yesterday I referred to, or I mentioned it a little bit. <coughs> Some Sahaba, they said, let them enter Medina. We will fight them here in the streets of Medina. The women and the children, they will be hitting them from the rooftop and we are the street. But the youth, they said, no, that will be a challenge to us. We have to go out and face them. So the battle of Uhud happened. Where 70 Sahaba got martyred, even though in the very beginning, the Muslims were victorious. They defeated them. They put them on run. لَقَدْ صَدَقُكُمُ اللَّهُ وَعَلَىٰ See, اِسْتَحُسُونَهُمْ بِإِذْنِ حَتَّى إِذَا فَشِنْتُمْ وَتَنَازَعْتُمْ See, فِي الْأَمْرِ وَعَسَيْتُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا أَرَاكُمْ مَا تُحِبُّونَ مِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُرِيدُ الدُّنْيَا وَمِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُرِيدُ الْآخِرَةِ They cast the heart. They said, Ya Rasulullah, why we got defeated? Allah promised us the victory. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, what I promise you got it. That's why you put them on run. They left the field. But the 50 Sahaba who were there on Jabal al-Rumad, that's actually a portion of Jabal al-Rinayn. You have seen the spot where the archers under the leadership of Abdullah bin Jubair Razi Allah ta'ala were standing. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told them, we will be fighting in the Saha, in the field. You should not come down. Doesn't matter what is going on. Now when they got defeated and they ran away, now the Muslims were gathering together the Ghanima, the spoils of war. So here these Sahaba archers, 
They said to their leader, Abdullah bin Jubair, no, there is no need of standing here. He said, as long as any order from Rasulullah does not come, we should stick here. But they said, that was not to be attacked from the back, to protect our army from the back. Now as they left the area, so there is no fear of that. So 40 Sahaba came down, then stayed with Abdullah bin Jubair radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Khalid bin Walid at that time was not posting. He brought his platoon and attacked these 10 Sahaba, they got, they got killed. Then he came down, now in the field, one group of Sahaba, they are taking rest here under a tree. The others, they are hanging their swords there and roaming around. So they were not ready for such like situation. When they got attacked, So they started running out. And Rasulullah was attacked also. Three kuffar they attacked the Prophet. One hit his head, another one his cheek, a third one his mouth. So his skull cracked, his cheek cracked, his teeth broke. And he fell down there in a trench. And there somebody shouted with louder voice in the Muhammadan Qatquti. So those who were still there in the battlefield, yet they shrunk. So they started running out as well. There in Medina, the woman, the Muslimah, they got the news that, oh, the battle turned around. So they rushed towards Uhud. When these Sahaba were running away towards Medina, so they were throwing sands on them. Limaza Farirtu. Why you left Rasulullah behind? They said he got killed. If Ummi Sulaim said, if he got killed, so what is the purpose of your life then? Where you are living? And if he is still alive, you are leaving him alone there? And these women, they approach the battlefield. Rasulullah says, when I was looking to my front, Nasiba bin Tika'ab al-Maziniya umma Ammara radiyallahu ta'ala anha, like a sherni, like a lioness she was fighting. He said, I was looking at my front, that was Nasiba who was fighting. I was looking at my right, that was Nasiba who was fighting. And he said, then I look at my back, Umm Sulaim was fighting like he shared me. And Abu Bakr Ta'ala, he was looking for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that where he is. And he said, Saad ibn Muhammad called me, Ya Abu Bakr, Haza Rasulullah. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was bleeding. And he called on Sahaba, Ilayya ibadallah, ana Muhammadun Rasulullah. Oh, Rasulullah is alive. So they came back. Here, the Mushriki, they felt the situation and the environment and the sensitivity that now when they will jump on us. So that will be the end of the story. So that's why they left the Sahaba. And that's why we say that once again, the ultimate end was the victory of Muslims. But in between, there was a temporary defeat where 70 Sahaba they got martyred from amongst them major generals like Sayyidina Hamza عنه, like Abdullah ibn Jahash عنه, like Musa ibn Umayyad the first missionary and the first ambassador of Rasulullah for Medina they got killed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After that, the battle was done. So Sahaba were looking for the Jarha, the angel people, and also gathering together the Shuhada. So yesterday I told you that Musaylim, a man who came, at that time he accepted Islam and he fought wholeheartedly. Abu Huraira 
said that we used to say Rajaran, Lam Yusalli Salatan wa Lam Yusum Yawman Dahar Jannah. What a lucky man. Never prayed a single prayer, not a single fast and went to Jannah. Because here he accepted Islam and there he got killed. There was another guy, Usairim. He was covered whole from head to toe in iron coat and shield and things like that. Nobody was knowing him that who is this guy fighting wholeheartedly. So somebody said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa also, yes, he has not seen his face. So they said, Rasulullah, this man is, who is that? Fighting wholeheartedly. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, well, around I see him in the head fire. I said, oh my God. Later on, they found out that that is Qazman, a munafiq. He was a munafiq. But anyhow, he came there. So somebody asked him when he was dying, that Qazman, you accepted Islam? He said, no. He said, so why I, you came here to fight from Rasulullah's side? He said, actually, I'm not fighting from Rasulullah's side. My tribe was behind Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa I'm trying, I'm fighting for my tribe. And later on, because of his injuries, he committed suicide. Yes, Sahaba said, Salam Rasulullah. That he didn't come for Islam. Number one, he was the same kafir. And number two, he killed himself. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa had already said, Go now. There is another Jew, his name is Mukhariq. What? Mukhariq. He also got killed. When they saw his body, so one Sahabi came, he said, Ya Rasulullah, Mukhariq. And when he was dying, so he told me that I have made a will. I have made a will. That was against our hero that these people are coming and taking our city. So that's why I came. And he told me I am not a Muslim. But I am going to fight these Muslims in Makkah. And if I got killed, so my whole property should go to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi prayers in Bukhariq, Khairu Yahud. Bukhariq, Khairu Yahud. Bukhariq was the best Jew. So it doesn't mean that all Jews are bad. Only bad are bad and good are good. Yes? Yes, sir. We are not stereotyped. Yes. yes. Especially for us, the Pashtuns, because they call us their cousins. <laughs> yes. They say that they are our last tribe. You say that they are what? Their last tribe. One of their tribe got last. <laughs> so, last of historians, they say that Pashtuns. Yes. And the culturally, there are so commonalities between us and Netanyahu. So, anyhow. <laughs> got it? So, Mukherik, Khair Yahud. So, Vekla Fukhud. But what happened? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He went after the age into a canyon towards the mountain of Uhud. Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu ta'ala who was defending him because the arrows were coming and Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu ta'ala he was hitting and hitting and hitting to push them back who were all around somewhere in the mountain and shooting arrows on Muslims especially on Rasulullah and Rasulullah used to give his own arrows from his own thirst to Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas. And Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas relation wise was the mamu of Rasulullah because he was related to Amina. And Prophet he used to say that in me a heart, Mama, in Pashto we call Mama. In Urdu we call Mamu. That Mamu. And sometimes he used to say, Irmi Asad, Fada ka abi wa ummi. Abu Bakr said, What a lucky man he was. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Lam yajma'a. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Awe ili had, Illa ma hadasa yaw ma uhud nisad ibn ibn waqqas. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Never said this word for anyone, That my parents should be sacrificed of him. But he said it a few times for Saad ibn ibn waqqas. That Irmi Asadu Fadakasa Abi Wahumi. 
in the daytime. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made a dua for Sa'ad ibn Abu Waqqas radiya Allah ta'ala an Allah musaddis samha sahma wa ajib da'watah that Allah saddis sahma take his every arrow to the target wa ajib da'watah and whatever he is making a dua so accept it so that's why Sa'ad ibn Abu Waqqas is considered mustajabu da'wat whenever he made a dua that was done because Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said it and after that, in all battles, until the days of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, he said, in my lifetime, I never targeted any target and shoot my son, and it missed the target. Never, ever, because Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah sahma wa ajib da'watah. So anyhow, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Ali radiallahu an, they just go and see what the mushrikeen are doing. So Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala in one rewaya, Sa'ad ibn Nawaz, maybe he has sent them one after the other to find out that they are attacking again or they are going back. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa told them, if they have put their luggage on their horses, or they have ridden the horses, so it means they are attacking Medina then. And if they have ridden the camels, so it means they are going back. So they both came because Rasulullah, they have mounted their camels. So Prophet said, so it means they are going back. So Rasulullah stayed there for some time. Later on, Prophet said, that now we have to bury the shuhada. Some people they have taken their shuhada back to Medina to bury them in Baqir. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa got informed, he sent them a message bring them back. We have to bury them in the Saha, in the battlefield. So our shuhada, they are there, yeah, the surround uh, uh, inside the wall. You have seen it. Then when they arrived in Medina, Prophet says, maybe on their way back, they will think of attacking Medina because they know that so many of us got killed and so many got injured and we are tired. So Rasulullah he sent or said on Saturday after Fajr that we have to follow them and to go after them. But only those who were with us yesterday. Because 300 Munafiqeen, they went back. So they are not allowed. Ibn Ubay said a few times, I want you to know, should not join us. What Munafiqat you have done yesterday? A famous Sahabi, Jabir ibn Abdullah Ansari, he came as Allah, you know, yesterday I was not with you. Because my father was going, my brother-in-law he was going. So my father told me, because Jabir Abdullah was only one, he had seven sisters. So he said, Jabir, I'm going. So if I will get martyred, so who will take care of these seven girls? So he left me behind for that. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him, yes, Jabir, you will go for sure. His father got martyred. His brother-in-law got martyred. My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam. So the next day, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he took that army. He got the news that they were there in Hamra ul Asad. And he there around there is a place known by the name of Hamra ul Asad. He said that some of them, they said, are we stupid? We caused them that much damage. We left them like this. We should have followed them until Medina. Entered Medina to get rid of them once for all. So let's go back. Safwan ibn Umayyah. One and who? Safwan ibn Umayyah. Safwan ibn Umayyah. He is the son of Umayyah ibn Khalaf. Safwan ibn Umayyah. 
He told them that, do you know? Now they are just like injured lions. An injured lion is very dangerous. Don't do that stupidity. One Sahabi, in one way or the other, he followed them and he heard this talk. And he came back to Rasulullah That they were thinking of coming back and taking Medina, but Safwan said so and so. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that Safwan is not that much clever and Akalman man, but at least he said something of Akalman. <laughs> Got it. Otherwise, he is not that much a halman. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa took the sahaba and he went all the way to Hamra wa Nasad, but they had already departed. And then a time came. One year later, the Jew from Marina, two tribes were still there. Banu Kenuka were turned out. Banu Nadir and Banu Qureza were still there. So Banuna, uh, Banu Nazir chief, his name is Huyay ibn Akhtab. And amazing, he is the father-in-law of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Later on he became father-in-law, but he was killed before. His daughter, our mother Safiya, radiyallahu ta'ala anha, she was in the prisoners of war. She was in the prisoners of war in Battle of Khaybar. Battle of Khaybar. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he married her. Safiya, radiyallahu ta'ala, very noble lady, our mother, radiyallahu ta'ala anha. So, Huyay ibn Akhtab, he went all the way to Mecca. That I have already been in touch with Jews in Medina. They are a part of this uh, plan. I have contacted such and such tribe, Ghitwan and them. Now I am here. You should arrange an army from all around. We will attack Muhammad. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And thus, a big army up to the Jews of Khabar, the Jews inside Medina from the back, the tribes in the surrounding area, the Mushrikeen of Mecca, they brought a big army to attack Medina. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa heard about that plot, so he consulted his Sahaba. We have to protect and defend Medina how it is possible. Salman al-Farisi radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, Ya Rasulullah, in Persia, a strategic point our strategic place, when we want to defend it, we trench a wide, deep trench around it, which is not crossable. So from three sides, Medina is protected naturally by thick garden of dead palm trees. But one side towards Jabal is Sila, which is towards Koba. <coughs> Here we should dig a trench and thus a wide trench, it was dug there. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was stationed there along with Sahaba Rizwanullah alayhi wa sallam. When the Mushrikeen and the Kuffar, they arrived there, they saw a trench. So, but one guy. His name is Amr ibn Abdi Wud. Amr ibn Abdi Wud. So he tried to cross over the trench. And he crossed it. And then he did Mubaraza and challenge that anyone who can come forward. So Sayyidina Ali was fully covered. He came forward. So he asked him, Who? He said, Ali ibn Abi Talib. So he said, Li Abi Talib bin Ali Ahsan. La uridu an uqatilaka wa abdulak. Your father, look, people of different culture, they have some character. He was a kafir and mushrik. But he said, Yabna nephew, 
I don't want to fight you or to kill you. Why you are killing yourself? Your father sometime back he had done ihsan to me. I don't want to kill his son. But Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, But I want to fight you and to kill you. So he says, you the young boy. So an exchange of hit happened between them both. But Ali hit him in such a way that he fell down there in the trench. So Sahaba Rizwanullah Ali Majmahin, they started shooting stones on him. He said, if you people want to kill me, don't do that to me. That someone should come and just scrape me too. So Ali went there and he said, Bismillah Allah Akbar. So he was gone. This siege was for almost one month. It was a freezing cold. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a wind, very cold wind. But here, that was like Riyah. But there on the other side was just like the tornado. So the stones, they were hitting them and their camels and their horses. They broke the ropes and they stampeded them. And the Mushrikeen, they started running. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa anzala jurud lam tarawha. The angels came down. They were shouting, Take them! Get them! Yeah. In a stormy night, and they were running out there behind us. So in the morning, Jibreel Amin came to Rasulullah He said, They are gone. They have ran away. So Rasulullah He said to Sahaba, Let's go back. They came back. Prophet took a shower. Changed. Jibreel Amin came in such a shape, the armor coat, the sword, everything is there. Said Rasulullah, you change, we are still in position. So he said that you told me that they have run away. He said they have run away, but from the back these Jews, they were plotting that we will attack them from the back. Banu Qureza and Banu Navir. Banu Qureza, they, they try to attack you from the back. So you have to take or get rid of them. So Rasulullah announced that we have to go there to Banu Qureza. Their city of Banu Qureza, the place is very well known. MBS is reviving that area to make it a tourist point that here was Banu Qureza. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he sent a platoon under the leadership of Sayyidina Ali رضي الله تعالى عنه before. When they arrived, these Jews, oh you people think, we are like these illiterate people of Makkah. And you defeated them, so you think you can defeat us. And use bad language against Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And later on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam joined them. And he besieged them from all around. When they came to know there is no way out. So once again, the Rais of Munafiqin approached the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this time, not. Absolutely not. Got out. My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam. Then they themselves requested the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We want a solution. You want a solution. What solution? That we ask for arbitration. And arbitration should decide. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Whom you want? They said, Saad ibn Mu'az, He got injured with a stray arrow there in French. Battle of French. So he was bleeding, he was too weak. Lot of bleeding happened. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sent him a message. He was under the supervision of Rufayda Aslaniya radiyallahu ta'ala anha. She was the surgeon of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the battlefield. What is his name? Rufayda Aslaniya radiyallahu ta'ala anha. Rufayda Aslaniya radiyallahu ta'ala anha. She used to establish the hospital, portable hospital in the battlefield. 
Yes, and to do the surgery and the treatment and everything. So, Saad ibn Muaz was under his her supervision. Prophet Sam sent a message to him. Saad radiallahu ta'ala, no, he mounted his donkey and he came there. When he was coming, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Sahaba, Umuri Sayyidikum, stand up in respect of your chief. Umuri Sayyidikum, stand up in respect of your chief. So, Sahaba stood up in respect. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Sahab, that is not honesty that I will give you some tips. But they said, he should be the arbitrator because in the time of Jahiriya, he was the ally of Banu Quraysa. So that's why they put their trust in you. So just go whatever you will decide, we will follow that. Saad ibn Muaz went there and he asked them, you asked for me to be an arbitrator? They said, of course. And the woman and the children, they were crying to Saad. Saad, uncle, please. Saad was not giving any commentary in their cry. He said, okay, listen, my decree is, you are the traitors. Traitors are to be killed. There is no any other decree. And your woman and your children to be enslaved. And your property is to be confiscated. And he came back. And he told Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that I have given my decree. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Barakallahu fi khaya saad. Haza ma raziya bihillahu wa rasooluh. That is the decree Allah is happy with and Rasulullah is happy with. So there were almost 400 people, the combatant. One by one, they were called. Come on. Yes, they were taking Mr. So and so, come on. So one guy, a Jew, he asked the other, Where they are taking us? He said, To eat biryani. <laughs> <laughs> they are taking us because they are called biryani. So one by one, they are taking us. Yes. <laughs> eat your food. He said, You don't know. That anybody who goes, it doesn't come back. <laughs> Say the Aisha Ta'ala says at that time, a woman was sitting with me, she was Yehudiya. And suddenly a caller called her name. Lady so and so, come on. So she stood. So he said, Where are you going? He said to be killed. He said, Why are you to be killed? He said, because I know that. He said, what do you mean? He said, before. Before. When Saad was decreeing. So my husband, he told me. That held this big rock. And hit a Muslim with that. And kill him. I don't want you to be a prisoner after my death. Nor I like you to be the wife of somebody else after my death. So just commit this crime to be killed in retribution. So she said, I did it purposely and that was. So she got killed. But anyhow, this battle was done. Now Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told Sahaba, Rizwan Allah from now onward, Mushrikeen in Makkah will never think of attacking you. This was the last battle. If you want to fight them, you will. But they will never. And next in future, they never plotted to go. Yes, they were doing conspiracies. But they were. But anyhow. <laughs> so, we are not approaching the triumph yet. Yes. But at least, we are approaching Trump now. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> <laughs> الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله الأنبياء المرسلين محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين. اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا مولانا محمد. صلاة تكون النجاة وسيلة ولعلو الدرجات كفيلة. وصلاة تكون لك رضاء ولحقه أداء. 
وصلاة تحل بها العقد وتفرج بها الكرب وصلاة تنجينا بها من جميع الأهوال والأفات وتطلنا بها جميع الحاجات وتطهرنا بها من جميع السيئات وترفعنا بها على الدرجات وتبلغنا بها الصلايات من جميع الخيرات في الحياة وبعض الموات إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم ربنا هدنا وهد بنا وجعلنا هداة مهديين دعاة إلى سبيك وحماة الدين اللهم اجعلنا من الراشدين الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه ربنا اجعلنا من التوابين من المتطهرين واجعلنا من عبادك الصالحين الذين لا خوف عليهم ولا يحزنون اللهم ربنا اغفر لنا ولاخواننا الذين سبقونا بالايمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين امنوا ربنا انك رؤوف رحيم لا اله الا الله الحليم الكريم سبحان الله رب العرش العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نسالك موجبات رحمتك وعزاء مغفرتك والغنيمة من كل بر والسلامة من كل إثم لا تضارا ذنبا لا غفرتا ولا همان لا فرجتا ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا ولا خيرة لا قزيتها ولا دينا إلا أديتا ولا مريضا ولا رزق إلا شفيتا ولا مشكلة إلا سهلتا ولا مجاهدا إلا نصرتا ولا عدوا إلا زمتا وكبتا ولا أسيرا مسلما وأرضا محتلة إلا أنقصتهما ولا طالب علم إلا علمتا ولا عالما إلا عملتا ولا عاملة إلا أخلصتا ولا مخلصا إلا قبلتا اللهم ربنا وفقنا لما تحبه وترضاه ربنا هب لنا من ازواجنا وذرياتنا قرة عين واجعلنا للمتقين اماما ربنا لا تؤاخذنا ان نسينا اخطانا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا اسرا كما حملت على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقه لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا انت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين والله سبحانه وتعالى سنس الصدق وي ار تاكينج اباوت دي سيره اوف يور بيليفد بروفيت صلى الله عليه وسلم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever we spoke, good and right, accept it. If any mistake, unintentionally, it happened, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, forgive us. Allah, all those brothers and sisters who listen to us very attentively, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bless them here and also in the ayah of Tari Hasna wa Qina Azab al-Nar. All those brothers and sisters, they are suffering from any type of disease and sickness, Allah, give the shifa kamil a'ajil. Those are for Kit and kin, our relatives, our friends, our Muslims all over the world who passed away, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them best paradise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Muslim Ummah is passing through atrocities all over the world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help them and bend them out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help our brethren there in Kashmir, in Palestine, in Afghanistan, in Yemen, in Iraq, in Libya, in any part of the world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are the followers of your beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was sent by you and we have been appointed by your Prophet to convey his message. We admit that we have a lot of shortcoming. We are not performing our duty properly. We didn't fulfill our job. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the to convey his message. Not to be ashamed of not doing our job properly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide the entire humanity to Islam and to the path of Muhammad. We don't want any human to get punished on the day of judgment. That is our vision, that is our will, and that is our intention. So Allah give us tawfiq, make us the ambassadors of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all those brothers and sisters who do not have a job and they are looking for. Allah bless them with a proper job. Allah those who have a job or business or whatever, for their livelihood, give them a lot of halal and protect them from anything which is haram. Because haram is the hellfire. Ulaika ma yakuluna fi butun illa nar wa sayaslaun sa'ira. So Allah protect us from your azab and your punishment. Allah those ulama, and those Muslims, brothers and sisters, who are serving the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one way or the other, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept their efforts and their striving hard. The ulama in tulaba of madaris and masajid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them tafiq and make them the proper servants of Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ulama. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Waras tun anbiya. In a nabi, he is doing the work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَمَا أَسْأَلَكُمْ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ أَجْرِهِ in أَجْرِهِ لَا عَلَى اللَّهِ that they are doing it for your good pleasure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us our rizq from khaza'in al-hayt. 
ولا سبحانه وتعالى عند العلماء يو دم ذا اخلاص يساو يو الكاز فار يو ار جود بليش او الله سبحانه وتعالى ديز برادر ذا سيستم هو سيتينج هير يو نو ذير نيدز اند ذير نيسيسيتيز ايفن ذوز هو ار نوت هير بت ذي لايك وات وي ديد اند وات وي ار دوينج سو الله سبحانه وتعالى جرانت ذم ذير نيدز اند نيسيسيتيز ريموف ذير مشاكل اند ذير ديفيكولتيز يو اونر اس باي انفايتينج هير فار ويت ذا ستار من الله سبحانه وتعالى جيو نحن في رسبكت هير ان عرض عند هير عرض وصل الله تعالى على خير خلقه محمد وعلي وصحابه نعيم بحمد الله